This drill you're not doing turned my student from a winless golfer to winning four professional tournaments in two months. And if you do this drill too, which I call the holy grail of drills, you're gonna massively improve your swing in so many different areas. It's gonna be a no brainer. And I'm gonna show you a good practice routine to do with this drill at the end of the video. So what this drill is, it is an alignment stick in the belt loops drill. So we grab an alignment stick, put it in our belt loops, and we also grab another alignment stick and place it down the target and slightly behind us. And all we wanna do from there is hit the stick as soon as we can in the downswing. And that's gonna train a bunch of really good moves into our golf swing. So why you can get so many good moves into golf swing doing this is because it gives you the perfect hip movement in the three movements the hips do. So one, it gives you great rotation, of course, trying to hit that stick that's behind you before you get to impact gets you rotating really nicely through. So what does rotation do? Gives you really good stable club face control going through there. So that's gonna help your dispersion. You're gonna hit less big left, less big right. Awesome. And also rotation helps a little bit of a power. With that stick being there, just a little bit down the target line, it also helps you not overly shift and overly hip bump in the downswing. Because if I overly bump my hips, it's gonna be really hard for me to get enough hip rotation to be able to hit that stick before impact. So of course, just enough shifting of the hips will get me to where I'm getting that pressure left and I'm striking ball and turf. And of course, to play great golf, we need to hit ball and turf consistently every single time. And also, it helps you get great extension going through the golf ball. So that's where your lead side straightening as we go into impact. Because if I'm gonna hit this before impact, I have to have this left leg start to straighten up. And extension or extension of the left side is one of the biggest power producers in the golf swing. So not only does it get you turning that last little minute through the golf ball, left side extension helps propel you through the shot, but it really spikes up that power and really gains a ton of club head speed as a byproduct. So of course, with all that, it works in theory, but it works practically as well with my student here. Now, my student, when he came to me for lessons, he was really struggling with his golf. A professional golfer had been playing professional golf for a long time on the mini tours, and he had never won a tournament. What he was doing with his golf swing was the reason why he had never won a golf tournament up to that point. He was excessively sliding his hips coming in the downswing, which was tilting his body back and he was having a very flippy release because he wasn't getting much rotation due to all that slide he had. So we went and did this drill. So when we did this drill, it was a great one because like we said in the shifting and calming down excessive shifting portion, it stops you from doing that because you can't hit this stick behind you before impact having that excessive shift. So what we did with him, we really started nice and smooth and slow, some nice half swings to start off with. Just trying to feel like he's hitting that stick before impact. You can hit it at impact. That would be a good progression to start off with. But we really wanted to, to get him used to the feeling first. And then we started to ramp it up a little bit to where then he started to get it consistently before impact every single time. And it was amazing at what happened to his golf game. He would then be winning tournaments on a regular basis. Like I said in the title in the beginning, four tournaments in the space of two months. Absolutely unbelievable because that added rotation from doing this drill really helped him for his club face control. Because like I said, when he would have his sliding move in the downswing, he would lose control of club face, but it would also dump his club path too much on the inside. So having that extra little bit of rotation helped the club move a little bit more out in front of him, a little bit better control, and then better club face control. And that's what you need to do to hit greens on the regular basis. And for a professional golfer like him, he needs to be giving himself chances all the time to be able to build a score. And he would go and shoot 66s, 67s, sometimes a little bit lower than that, and of course be winning these tournaments. So let's get straight into this practice routine to do with this drill. So there's a very clear progression when we start to when we get quite proficient at it, and a drill also alongside that we can do without a golf ball and with a golf ball to help, which is the exact same thing I did with my student. So with this drill, of course, we've got the stick going through the belt loops and we wanna hit the stick that's just behind us when 
down towards the target before impact. When we start off doing it, we're gonna be really bad at it, of course. Being bad at a drill when you start off is a good sign. My student wasn't that great at the drill at first either. This is why we started in a half swing since, to get him used to the feeling. But something you can do is move the stick closer towards you. So moving the stick closer towards you here will get you to where, yes, you can still turn the hips and you're still going to turn the hips if you wanna hit that before impact, but you're not gonna be turning as much. So let's say you're a senior golfer who can't quite get as open as you would like, or you're someone who really just isn't used to rotating. Starting here with the stick just a little bit behind you, still the same distance down towards the target, is a great way to start off with. And then what I'd want you to see before you move the stick more back, the more back we move it, the harder it gets, is let's say you have 10 balls, for example, I'd want you to hit seven of them whilst hitting that before impact. Of course, the only way you're really gonna know that is looking on camera. Hearing it, you can kind of hear it, but our ears can deceive us with this drill. It can sometimes sound like we're doing it before impact. We look on camera and we're not. So again, this is just a little bit behind me. It's just a little bit behind the heels, but down that target line. And here we go, here's another one. So there, I could clearly, for me, audibly hear that I hit that beforehand. So. All good, let's say I did seven of those. What I'll do, move it back a little bit. Again, this doesn't have to be exact on what you do with it. I'm moving actually that back quite aggressively. But just go to what you feel. Once you go a little bit more back, see how hard it is. Can you hit it before impact still? Look on camera to see, are you getting more open with those hips? Are you moving the hips in those good three ways that we want, lateral, rotational, and extension? It's just about, I feel like I got that. So then of course, again, seven out of 10 balls, if you can do it, move it back a little bit more and you can imagine, you can make this very hard. So let's do something really, really hard. Let's throw ourselves in the deep end because that sometimes can be a good way to learn. It's not the way we did it with my student, but it could be a way for you to learn, go, wow, that's what it feels like to open up the hips a ton. So, okay, let's hit one here. And I really want to try and hit that as soon as I can. I probably won't. I don't think I hit it at all. Probably just went over it from left side extension. So I'll probably need to move that a little bit more directly behind me. Of course, the more we're opening up, the more we'll need to have that stick more behind because we'll hit it a little bit further back. So let's have another one. So this is gonna force me to really open up. Again, really good rotation there. As you can see, I completely swiveled around, but did I hit it? No, really, really difficult, but it gets you feeling a very extreme version of it, which is another reason why this is a holy grail type of drill, because you can tailor it to your needs and you can go, if you want to go crazy, jump in the deep end, you can do it just like that. So the extra drill that we did, the classic chair drill. So this is brilliant. And for my student, this was another perfect match for drill other than the good old holy grail drill. So what we did here, we just had a camping chair in my sense. For him, we used a dining room chair because this is a practice thing we did at home. We also did a little bit of hitting balls with it, which I'll show you. So with this drill, if we pushed it back in the backswing with the right hip and then pushed it back in the downswing with the left hip, we managed to calm down the hip slide from that front also, because I can't push this chair back if I slide those hips. So it's a great one to do at home where we just had the club across the shoulders, pushed it back, then pushed it back again, stopped them from sliding, get some opening up, and extend that lead side as well. So we're getting those good three movements that our hip generally do in the downswing. So repping that out a ton at home, absolutely. And of course, we did quite a lot of it on the driving range too, to mix the drills up, because both the drills target the exact same thing. So that's where we can absolutely utilize both of them. So just have that chair behind you, at the back of your hamstrings, push it back in the backswing, push it back in the downswing. So that's gonna have a very good effect to our rotation, our shifting a decent amount, not excessive, and getting that extension to brilliant, brilliant drill. So what did he do on the golf course as he was playing these tournaments and winning these tournaments? He implemented the feels that he got from these drills. So it's a really, really important thing. A lot of golfers are always asking, what should I feel? to do this specific movement. What I might feel and what you might feel will be completely different things. 
That's why doing drills and the feelings that you're creating, like with our stick drills there, that will create a very distinct feel for you. And enough of those repetitions will be able to create that going onto the golf course. Of course, via just getting into your subconscious, so just repping it out, and two, replicating the feel you felt when you're there. I've had times in my career where I was doing a very specific drill and it created a very specific feeling. And I'd almost imagine that I was still doing the drill whilst I was out in the golf course. And that's exactly what my student did also. So if you enjoyed the video, click that like button. If you want more golf instruction just like this, hit a subscribe button and hit that bell button too to be notified every time I put out a video. So guys, brilliant news. My courses are now available on the Skillist website. So you don't have to go and purchase them and watch them on your app. On a small phone, you can go onto your desktop, purchase and watch the courses on the Skillist site. So whether it's the ultimate guide to rotation and the downswing, the ultimate guide to fixing your over the top, or the complete guide to shallow in the golf club, they are all there on the Skillist website. So all you have to do is go to the Skillist site, click on courses, and there you can see the courses right there. Mine are there, as you can see, and you can even type in the name of the course you want and it will pop up for you there. And there's also a link to all the courses down in the description also.